Come to the set of questions for A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is number seven now for inorganic and physical. I've got a separate playlist for organic chemistry. And I hope you like the video. If you haven't already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing to the channel? But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So to calculate the number of particles, so it's going to be molecules in this case, we would work out the moles of molecules and multiply by Avogadro's number. So obviously the greater number of moles will have the greater number of particles. So all we need to do for this one is work out the moles of each of those chemicals. So that's just mass over MR each time. So there's the moles there. So you can see that B has the highest number of moles, so that would have the greatest number of molecules. Moving on to number two, I think this is pretty horrible, really, considering there's only one mark going for it. OK, so hopefully this will make sense for you. So I've got this partial equation here to represent the information in the question, and we were told that 0.688 grams of the oxide was reduced with hydrogen and it's given 0.235 grams of H2O. The important thing to appreciate is the moles of oxygen in the oxide will be the same as the moles of H2O produced. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out how many moles of H2O we've got. So that's coming out at 0.0131 moles of H2O, which means that there must be that many moles of oxygen in the oxide. So now we know that, we can work out how many grams of oxygen are in the oxide. So that's coming out at a mass of oxygen of 0.209 grams. So we now need to take that off the starting mass, 0.688 grams, to find the mass of manganese. So that's given 0.479 grams. So now we sort of do a quick empirical formula calculation where we work out the moles of each component and express them as a ratio. Moles of manganese is coming out at 0.00873 to the moles of oxygen we've already calculated. So if we divide both by the smallest, we get 1 to 1.5, which if we double, we'll get 2 to 3, which gives C as the answer. So very well done if you got that one right. Question 3 is a bit like number 1. So the number of particles, moles times Avogadro's number, but this time we're talking about hydrogen atoms. So the first thing we need to do is work out how many moles of this pharmacolite we've got. So that's just mass over MR. So that's coming out at 0.01157 moles. So the moles of hydrogen is going to be five times that because every mole of this pharmacolite has five moles of hydrogen. So we need to multiply this by five now. So that's 0.05787 moles of hydrogen atoms. So we just need to multiply this now by Avogadro's number which gives 3.48 times 10 to the 22, so option D was the answer. Number four, so the equation for the reaction, straightforward, HCl plus NaOH gives NaCl and H2O. So the initial moles of acid is concentration times volume, so 0.008, and alkali likewise, concentration times volume, 0.006. So at the end of the reaction, the final moles, well, acid's in excess, so there'll be a little bit of that left over. So it's the difference between the two moles of reactants. So 0.002 moles of HCl remain, and we're making 0.006 moles of NaCl because of the one-to-one -one ratio with the um, NaOH. So they're not concentrations, remember, they're moles. So to get that as a concentration, we divide by the total volume of this solution, which is going to be 100 centimetres cubed, 40 plus 60, which is 0.1 decimetres cubed. So effectively, we're just multiplying them by 10, which will give option C for your answer, 0.02 moles per decimetre cubed of HCl and 0.06 moles per decimetre cubed of NaCl. Moving on to number five, nice quick one this one. So a quick question you can ask about a molecule to see if it's going to be poor or not. Has it got different terminal atoms? And you can see that in A, you have got hydrogen and nitrogen around the central carbon. They're different, so HCN is going to be polar. 
Moving on to question six, so which element has the largest third ionization energy? So the equation for third ionization energy just for a general element is on the screen there. So basically we just need to think about where this third electron is. So because lithium's third electron's in the first shell, all the others are in the second shell, lithium's third ionization energy is going to be the highest. So that was the answer. Number seven, super quick. So first order reactions, remember, have a constant half-life. So it doesn't matter that the initial concentration is different. It's always going to be, in this case, 16 minutes. So the answer was D. Number eight, test now our knowledge of the factors affecting lattice enthalpy. So this is the reverse of lattice enthalpy. So we're breaking down the lattice, not forming the lattice. But the factors are still the same. So ionic radius and ionic charge. I've highlighted ionic charge because that's going to help us get the answer. So there's all the charges of the ions involved in these lattices. So D will have the greatest attraction because you've got plus 2 with minus 2. Moving on to number 9, so we've got to calculate the entropy change for the reaction I've written up there. First thing we do is rule out C and D. They've both got positive signs, so they would involve an increase in entropy. This is a decrease because you're going from one and a half moles of gas down to one. So for the calculation, we take the entropy of the product, SO3, and subtract from that the entropy of the reactants. So when you put that in your calculator, you get minus 254, so the answer is B. Moving on to number 10, a little bit tricky this one. So there's the dissociation for methanoic acid. And we're told it has a starting concentration of 0.015 moles per decimeter cubed. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the um, square root of Ka times Ha equation to calculate the H plus concentration. And then we can compare that concentration with the start concentration of the acid. And that will give us a measure of the dissociation. So H plus concentration comes out at that there. So percentage dissociation is the H plus concentration divided by the concentration the acid started at times 100, 10.3%, answer D. Moving on to number 11. So we've got these two test tubes. First one's got potassium carbonate in, so we've got these ions here. Other test tubes got a silver nitrate solution in, so we've got those ions there. So they've added um, dilute hydrochloric acid to each test tube. So effectively they're putting H plus ions in and Cl minus ions. So we've just got to think about what's going to react with what. So in the first test tube, the H plus ions are going to re react with the carbonate ions and form carbon dioxide. So you're going to see fizzing, you're going to see effervescence. So that means that C and D are possible answers. Um, a and B are out now. Second test tube, the chloride ions are going to react with the silver ions and form a white precipitate. So D is the answer. Moving on to number 12, so we'll just run through the statements and see which one is the correct one. So statement A, the cell potential is 2.88 volts. So that's not right, the cell potential is actually 4.2 volts for this and that's because we take the most positive electrode potential and subtract from that the least positive one. Statement B, the reaction at the positive electrode is that there. That statement's wrong because the positive electrode is the one with the most positive electrode potential. So it's the, uh, the bottom one and this equation is going to run in the forwards direction whereas this equation here is the reverse of that. Statement C is actually the right answer, and that's because we take this reaction here, run it forwards, because it's got a more positive electrode potential, and we add to that the other one, but we put it in reverse. When you do that, you get this here, and then you can cancel out the Li plus ions, and it does leave us with that. Just for revision, we'll rule out D as well. So the oxidation number changes in the cobalt. It's actually going from plus four down to plus three and not plus two to plus one. So C. 
Moving on to number 13, so we've got to think about what type of structures these have got. So C2H6 ethane is a simple covalent structure. It's actually non-polar as well, so that will only have London forces um, in the solid state. H2O, another simple covalent structure, but this one's obviously got hydrogen bonds between its molecules. So we've got London and hydrogen bonds there. Silicon is a giant covalent structure, so it's got covalent bonds between its atoms. So one and two only, so B was the answer. Question 14, so this anti-cancer complex is cisplatin, and I've drawn it up there. So we'll just run through the statements to see which ones are correct. Bond angle is 90 degrees. Yeah, that's right, it's a square planar complex, so it does have those bond angles. Oxidation number of platinum is plus four. Well, that's wrong. It's actually plus two for the platinum. That's because the two chloride ligands are negative one each. The um, ammonia ligands don't have any charge. So the platinum has to be plus two to keep the whole thing neutral. It forms both optical and cis trans isomers. Well, it definitely forms cis trans, but it can't form optical. So that statement was wrong. So just one, so D. And finally, number 15. So again, we'll just run through the statements, see which ones are correct. So the decomposition is a redox reaction. So there's the oxidation numbers of everything written in there. So you can see that the chlorine has gone down in oxidation number. So that's a reduction process. Fluorine's gone up. That's an oxidation process. So yeah, this is a redox reaction. When the equilibrium mixture is cooled, the color fades. So we're interested in the sign of the enthalpy change, which is positive. So the forward reaction is endothermic, which means the reverse reaction, which is going to be favoured by a cooler temperature, is exothermic. And that's the colourless side. So that's right. Decomposition has a negative entropy change. So we're interested in the moles of gas left and right. So this has actually got a positive entropy change because you're going from two moles of gas on the left to four on the right, so that statement's wrong. So one and two only, so B.